Hi, I'm Nazmul Hassan, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to design a cylindrical dielectric resonator in CST. Before starting the design process, let's have a quick introduction to dielectric resonators. So these are very weird shaped materials that can be resonated if excited electromagnetically and the resonance frequency would be dependent on the shape of this material and also it depends on the type of the excitation that you're uh, giving for example you can excite these materials by using microstrip aperture or even probe so different excitation types would generate different modes inside these resonators and then you will have different resonance frequency all right and most of these materials most of these resonators do not have closed form equation of resonance frequency so it's basically uh, determined by using numerical analysis and some kind of curve fitting method anyway so let's proceed to the cylindrical dielectric resonator antenna which is the main focus of this tutorial um, so when you construct a cylindrical dielectric resonator antenna we place it on top of a substrate and then we can excite this CDRA which is the short form of the cylindrical dielectric resonator antenna so we can excite this CDRA by using a microstrip line so the microstrip line is used to excite this antenna so this CDRA is coupled electromagnetically by with this microstrip line all right and below this substrate we have a full ground plane so no radiation happens below this substrate all the radiation is right on top of the um, cylinder So if we assume that the cylinder has a radius of R and a height of H, then the resonance frequency can be roughly calculated by using this expression. But again, this expression is only valid for this hybrid mode, which is denoted by HEM11 delta mode. Now, um, you should also be aware of that this same cylindrical dielectric resonator antenna can be uh, excited by using different modes for example transverse electric or transverse magnetic modes and then you have to calculate the frequency of those modes in it with different expressions and um, so what determines that which mode is generated the answer is the excitation type determines that what type of modes are you generating in the dielectric resonator all right so you can um, excite this same cylindrical dielectric resonator by using a probe or by using an aperture then you would be able to generate those transverse electric and transverse magnetic modes all right anyway if you want to know more about the dielectric resonator antenna you should be able to find the material online or even you can just look it up in any textbook so um if we uh, uh, if we see the formula we have an epsilon dra which is the permittivity of the dielectric material which is usually very high and c is the speed of light now if you assume that the radius and the height of the cylinder is 10 millimeter and if we use an alumina ceramic which has an uh, which has a dielectric constant of 9.9 .9, then the calculated resonance frequency is 4 gigahertz all right and in our CST design we are going to use these values so the all the parameters 
uh, they have been uh, put in this table and the corresponding values have been written there. And the substrate that we're going to use is a Rogers RT5880 substrate, which has a permittivity of 2.2. All right. So let's begin our design process in CST. Um, open a new window in CST and then turn on the local current system. And then select break to draw a substrate. Now let's name it substrate. Along the U axis, let's define the length. So, so by two. And along the v-axis, let's define the width. And along the w-axis, the thickness of the substrate. Let's load the Rogers substrate. 5880. Okay. Um, define the length as 60 millimeter, width also 60 millimeter, and the thickness is 1.52 millimeter. Okay, so this is the sample straight. Now let's draw the ground plane. So, ground, these dimensions are exactly what we defined for the substrate. And the thickness of the ground plane is the metal, I mean the thickness of the metal trace on the PCB, which is MT. And we're going to use copper for the metal. And the thickness of the metal should be 0 0.035. This is the equivalent thickness when we press one ounce of copper uniformly in PCB board. Now, I would like to bring the coordinate system on the top surface of the substrate. Uh, for that, go to transform and we're going to move upward. So we're going to move the coordinate system by the thickness of the substrate, SH. You can check the preview. Yeah, that's it. Um, now we are going to define the cylinder. So type CD array. The outer radius is R. Inner radius is 0. This should be 0, 0. And the double max um, double minimum should be metal thickness because um, this cylinder should be placed on top of on top of a microstrip, and the microstrip has a certain thickness. Metal thickness is MT, so there should be some room for the cylinder to be placed on top of the microstrip. That's why I'm giving double minimum as MT. And double max should be the height of the cylinder plus this MT to compensate this. We have to add it with the height. Um, you have to use alumina 
ceramic so just talk alumina 99.5 percent so you can see the specs it's the same specs that we want for our cylinder um you can check the preview oh yeah so the radius should be 10 millimeter the height 10 millimeter there you go okay okay fine now we have to draw the microstrip to excite this cylindrical dielectric resonator for that we have to transform the WCS again um, along the u-axis it should be the half of the length of the substrate you can check the preview button now let's draw this microstrip so microstrip um, so U minimum is the length of the microstrip, which is L, and U maximum should be zero. Along the V axis, we have the width of the microstrip, which is T by two, and T by two. And W maximum should be the thickness of the metal trace, MT. All right, and select copper. L is 40 millimeter, T is 4.565 millimeter. Okay, looks great. All right, so we have all the components ground plane, microstrip, the CDRA, and the substrate. Okay. Um, now we need to define a port for that select pick and pick face double click on this face and then go to home and then macros solver from here go to calculate port extension coefficient So simply just press calculate. So we have a value of 8.6. Uh, we need to save this value in a new parameter. So let's define a new parameter. Or you can uh, just simply click on this option. So uh, the port will be automatically created. It's up to you. So let's create a, a new parameter and then define the port manually. All right. You can also do it automatically from this option. It's up to you. So define a new parameter. OK. Its value should be 8.69. Now go to um, modeling uh, sorry simulation and then go to waveguide port now write down k multiplied by sh the thickness of the substrate so just copy and paste and here along the Z minimum axis you should only write SH all right and you can enable this option uh, press OK so the 
port has been created all right so this is the port um <clears throat> now we have to simulate this structure but before starting the simulation you have to define the frequency range define the frequency range of 3.5 to 5 gigs since the resonance frequency of this antenna is 4 gigahertz so it's a reasonable range um, now define the four fields we need to check the four fields so select four field and 4 gigahertz define one four field and another four field at 4.1 gigahertz All right okay fine now let's go to setup solver and enable this option normalize to fixed impedance which is 50 ohm now we can uh, we are ready to simulate this antenna just press the start button so the simulation is going on i will pause the video and come back again once it is done all right so the simulation is done now let's check the simulation results let's check the s11 first So this is S11, as expected, this antenna resonates at almost 4.16 GHz. So our calculation value was 4 GHz and the simulation result is 4.16 GHz. It's almost same. And let's check the four fields. So this is the four field at 4.1 gigahertz 6.77 dBi and uh, you can see the plot is broadside the radiation is maximum at the top of the CDRA and you can see the antenna so the radiation is maximum right on top of the CD array. All right. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope I have clarified the design of CD array. Thanks again.